Let's imagine we have the same setup as before, a 12.5 kilogram block sitting on an incline that is inclined at an angle of 10 degrees to the horizontal. And let's see, uh, uh, but now let's imagine there's some friction. We've got a coefficient of kinetic friction between the block and the incline of 0.120 and a coefficient of static friction between the block and the incline of 0.210. Now let's figure out what's going to happen here. Again, we will break this down into an x and y part. Again, on an incline, we'll define x as down the incline, y as perpendicular to the incline. Looking at the forces, the total force acting in the y direction, same exact uh, approach as we used last time, will lead us to the normal force equal to mg cos theta, which is 121 newtons, just like last time. What about the forces in the, y, uh, the x direction? Now we have the x component of the force acting in the positive x direction, but now we've got a frictional force. If the block is trying to, so to speak, slide down the incline, the friction is going to resist that movement, and so the frictional force is going to act up the incline. So in the x direction, we'll have w sub x minus the frictional force. So what happens? Is there going to be a, a zero x force, or is there not going to be a non? Is there going to be a non-zero x force, which will allow the object to accelerate, to slide down the incline? Well, what we have to do is we have to compare these two forces. What values could they have? W sub, sub x, just like last time, mg sine theta will be 21.8 newtons. But what about f? What about the frictional force? How large can the frictional force be? What's the largest value the frictional force can have? Well, that would be if it were Fs max. What is Fs max? It's mu s times the normal force. In other words, mu s 0 0.210 times the normal force that we already calculated, it's lucky we did that, 121 newtons, gives us a value of Fs max is 25.3 newtons. Now, I want you to spend a minute and think, what does this mean? What's going to happen? We've got W sub x is 21.8 newtons, Fs max is 25.3 newtons. Does the block slide or not? I want you to think about it. If you can't figure it out, turn off the video and think about it until you reach a decision. One way or the other. It slides, it doesn't slide. Well, the force down the incline is 21.8 newtons. Is that large enough to overcome how much friction there could be? Is that larger than this? It is not. Fs max is larger than this amount. The force down the incline is not enough to overcome friction. So what happens? The block does not slide. Let me ask you a question. What is the frictional force? In this case, what value does the frictional force have? Well, what kind of friction is it? The block is not moving, so it is static friction. And what's the value going to be? It's only going to be as large as it needs to be to balance the part of the weight down the incline. So the static frictional force is 21.8 newtons. Only as large as it needs to be. It doesn't have its maximum value. It is as large, only as large as it needs to be. Great. So in this case, the block does not slide. What about if we increased the incline? So rather than 10 degrees, let's keep everything else the same, but let's increase the angle to 40 degrees. Not 10 degrees, but 40 degrees. What happens in that case? Well, let's see what changes. By changing the angle to 40 degrees, starting up from the top, our force in the y direction, looking at all the forces in the y direction, Gives, which get, gave us before the normal force is equal to mg cos theta. mg cos theta is now not 121 newtons, but 93.8 newtons. The larger value of cosine gives us a smaller normal force. The weight, the component of the weight in the x direction, mg sine theta, is now larger, 78.7 newtons. There's more of the component of the weight acting down the incline. What is Fs max? It's again mu s times the normal force, but we now have a new normal force, which leaves us with 19.7 newtons. So, I want you to again stop and think and ask yourself what's going to happen. We have 
a component of the weight down the incline of 78.7 newtons, an FS max of 19.7 newtons. What's going to happen? Will it slide or will it not slide? It will slide. The force down the incline is now large enough to overcome the, static, the maximum static frictional force, so it does slide. If it does slide, what kind of friction is going to be acting on the block? It's going to be kinetic. So now we have to figure out what's the kinetic frictional force, which is mu k times the normal force. With mu k, and again, our new normal force, 93.8, we get a kinetic frictional force of 11.3 newtons. What is the net force acting in the x direction? It's going to be W sub x, but now we know the frictional force is kinetic friction. So we've got W sub x, which is 78.7, minus F sub K, the kinetic frictional force, which is 11.3. Subtracting those, we get 67.4 newtons, which we know F sub X is equal to MAX. Divide by the mass, and we find, finally, that the acceleration is 5.39 meters per second squared. Very, very good. Not as high, not as large, as we found with no friction. Uh, oh, actually, well, I'm sorry, I shouldn't say this because I'm comparing now a 40 degree angle with the 10 degree angle before. So, scratch that. Do not compare this result with the uh, acceleration we got before. Um, but what we would find is that the acceleration with friction would be less than the acceleration we would find with no friction. Okay? We didn't actually calculate that. So, uh, all right, great. Let's take a look at another example. What I would like to do now is to go back to the problem where we have a frictionless surface, a mass on an incline, but I'm not going to put any numbers in here. I want to see if we can figure this out in the completely general situation, which we could then put whatever numbers in we want later on. Let's imagine we've got a mass m on an incline theta, and again, we're going to define our x and y in the way we have before. X is positive down the incline, Y is perpendicular uh, going upwards, perpendicular to the incline. All right, let's do this. Let's approach it this way and see what kind of results we can get. Again, defining our coordinates so that X is positive down the incline, Y is perpendicular up from the incline, like we just said. We've got what forces? We've got a normal force acting in the Y direction, the weight acting straight down, MG, Decomposing the weight into a y component and an x component, we have w sub y. Oh, sorry. And again, remember that this angle of the incline will be the same as this angle between the um, uh, straight down direction for the weight and the y direction perpendicular to the incline. Those will be the same. So we get that the component of the weight in the y direction is mg cos theta the co uh, in the negative direction. Uh, component of the weight in the x direction, mg sine theta. So what are the net forces in the y direction? We have fn minus w sub y has to be zero, and we end up again like we did before, uh, the normal force is mg cos theta. What about the forces in the x direction? Only force in the x direction is w sub x, Ass assuming there's no friction, right, I, uh, hopefully I said that. We're going to assume for this problem there's no friction. Force in the x direction is W sub x, which is mg sine theta. That must equal the mass times the acceleration in the x direction. Dividing by m, we end up with the acceleration down the incline is, is g sine theta. Now, let's take a minute and look at this result. What does this tell us? This is telling us the mass is going to accelerate down the incline, again, assuming frictionless, uh, frictionless situation. G sine theta. Now let's look at this at some, in some extremes to see if this makes sense. First of all, let's imagine that theta is zero. What does it mean if theta were zero? It would mean we're looking at a flat surface. We're looking at an object just sitting on a horizontal surface. But what is sine of zero degrees? Sine of zero is zero. That would give us an acceleration of zero. Does that make sense? Yes. If we just have an object sitting on a horizontal surface, what do we expect its acceleration to be? We expect its acceleration to be zero. So that makes sense, perfect sense. Let's look at another extreme. What if theta were 90 degrees? So in other words, let's take this all the way up to the perpendicular. What do we get at 90 degrees? Well, what is sine of 90? 
it's 1. And we end up with the acceleration equal to g. Does that make sense? Well, yeah. If we have basically a vertical surface and an object just accelerating down, you know, falling right down next to a vertical surface, if there's no friction, it doesn't matter if it's touching the surface or not. We expect it to accelerate down at g, and that's exactly what we get. So, very good. When theta is equal to zero, we get an acceleration of zero. When theta equals 90 degrees, we get an acceleration of g. All right, very, very good. That makes complete sense. Let's try this same thing, but let's add in some coefficients of friction and see what we get then. With friction, coefficients mu sub k and mu sub s, again, we're not going to put numbers in, the forces in the y direction are still the same. So we still end up with the normal force equal to mg cos theta. But now in the x direction, we'll have a frictional force. What, we don't know what kind of friction, but we'll have some kind of friction. So the forces in the f, x direction will be w sub x minus the frictional force. w sub x down the incline, f up the incline. Where w sub x is mg sine theta, and the frictional force is what? Well, we're not sure. But what's the maximum value it could be? The maximum value of the frictional force would be Fs max, which is mu s times the normal force, or mu s times mg cos theta. That's the maximum it can be. So whether it will slide or not will be determined by is mg sine theta bigger than mu s mg cos theta, or is mg sine theta less than mu s mg cos theta? Well, let's figure out what the cutoff value is. In other words, what's the maximum angle to which we could in increase the incline so that the mass doesn't slide? So what's going to happen? Imagine we've got the mass on the incline. At a low angle, it sits there. We increase the angle. Still, still doesn't move, doesn't move, doesn't move, doesn't move. Eventually, we get to an angle, a maximum angle, and anything at maximum angle, it's still there, anything bigger than that, and it starts to slide. So what is that maximum angle? The maximum angle would correspond to when the force down the incline is just equal to Fs max. Anything larger than that, and it will slide. Anything equal to it or less than that, and it will not slide. So when are these two, th these two things equal to each other. In other words, when is mg sine theta, and I'll call this theta max. This is the maximum angle that we can get to. When is mg sine theta max equal to mu s mg cos theta max? Well, divide both sides by mg, and the mg's cancel. Divide this side by cos theta max, and we have sine theta max over cos theta max. In other words, tangent of theta max equals mu sub s. This tells us what is mu sub s in terms of theta max, and this is actually how mu sub s can be determined for different surfaces. You put two objects on top of each other, incline one of them until it just starts to slide, and you can use that theta max, what's the maximum angle to which you can increase the incline and still not have it slide, and you can use that to determine what mu sub s is. Or, if you, uh, if you know mu sub s, you could use that to determine theta max. Take the inverse tan, and we have theta max equals inverse tan of mu sub s. Okay, that's a very, very interesting result. Let's look at, let's, let's compare this to what we just looked at for our 10 degree angle and our 40 degree angle and see how that corresponds here. In the previous problems, we had been using a value of mu sub s of 0.210. If we determine what is uh, the maximum angle for that mu s, theta max is the inverse tan of 0 0.210, which is 11.9 degrees. What did we find from our problems? When we used an angle of 10 degrees, 10 degrees is less than 11.9. And what did we find? The box did not slide, because we were at an angle of less than theta max. But then we tried an angle of 40 degrees. And what did we find in that case? We found at 40 degrees, which is greater than theta max, we found that the block did slide. Obviously, because the angle we chose is greater than theta max. Very, very good. So by 
by knowing uh, mu s, we can figure out theta max, or on the other hand, knowing theta max, we can figure out mu s. All right, great. Let's continue with this approach, but let's assume that we actually are in the range where the angle is greater than theta max, the object does slide, what's its acceleration going to be? Let's see if we can determine that.